first met Bill Clinton in the mid to late 70s. He was an up-and-coming politician. Uh, Bill Clinton suggested that I go to work for a place called the Arkansas Development Finance Authority. When I worked at ADFA, it was not uncommon for people to call me up and say, Hey, Nichols, the governor needs about five grand transferred to his travel account so he can go see his ladies. And we would at ADFA transfer five to ten thousand dollars for him to go see his girlfriends in either L.A. or New York. But he literally used money, ADFA money, the people of Arkansas, taxpayers' money, to conduct liaisons. For about two months, I watched accounts accumulate money, and then the month they zero balanced. They're laundered money. I went to Bill, and I said, Bill, you've got two weeks to tell the truth, or I'm going to tell it. You're breaking the law, and I can't be a part of it. Back in 1990, I did something that most people wouldn't do in Arkansas. I sued Bill Clinton. In that lawsuit, I brought out the names of five women. Gradually. The women who had carried on adulterous affairs with Clinton began to emerge. The first was Jennifer Flowers. During the 1992 presidential campaign, Jennifer Flowers had come out of my lawsuit. A man called me on the phone on a Monday. His name was Gary Johnson. He was an attorney. He was a special attorney. I didn't even know it. You see, he lived next door to Jennifer Flowers. For security purposes, Gary Johnson had installed a video camera near the front door of his Quapaw Tower condominium. Guess what he caught on tape? Bill Clinton walking into Jennifer Flowers' apartment on numerous occasions with a key. I actually saw him go into her condominium. In 1992, Clinton approached his friends at 60 Minutes and asked for a favor. Knowledge of Clinton's affair with Jennifer Flowers was about to derail his quest for the presidency, and Clinton was desperate for some media help. And they came to us because they were in big trouble in New Hampshire. They were about to lose right there, and they needed some first aid. They needed some bandaging. They needed, what they needed was a paramedic. Are you prepared tonight to say that you've never had an extramarital affair? It, that allegation is false. I had been Jennifer Flowers' neighbor. I knew that Bill Clinton wasn't telling the truth about that. He got threatening phone calls. He asked me, he said, well, they hurt me. I said, well, they hadn't hurt me. I don't know why I didn't worry more about that. Basically, what they said was, uh, you mind your own business. Um, and all it did was made me mad. Uh, I, I, would, I never thought in a million years that anybody would follow up on it. Saturday morning, we found Gary Johnson beaten and left for dead. And without getting into gory details, both elbows were dislocated, his collarbones were broken, his uh, spleen and his bladder were ruptured with holes the size of half dollars in them. His nose, his sinus cavities were all crushed. He had been beaten by Clinton's people. Were they very large? Yes. <laughs> yes, they were. Did they say, where's the tape? Yes, they asked me for the tape. And what's sick is the man gave them the tapes, and then they went and broke his elbows, punctured his spleen, punctured his bladder. They looked like state troopers, I'll say that. Clinton can be a very dangerous individual in the state of Arkansas. 